Welcome to the webinar. The following scenario will show how certain tasks can be completed using the FI360 toolkit and will give step-by-step -step directions which are intended to get users familiar with the various features of the toolkit. This scenario will include reviewing investments and creating custom reports. In this scenario, imagine it's one year after winning new business with a new client. You want to review the client's holdings and create custom report templates for a meeting. The FI360 default report templates might not be exactly what you want, so this will be your opportunity to customize those. And you can build these custom report templates with specific report sections, logos, disclosures, investment commentary, and a whole bunch of things that'll make it look good and also be pertinent to the situation at hand. So you can save these in the toolkit and they can be regenerated each time you meet with a client. So they're template based and you can use them across all clients. The main features that we'll be working with include the settings area, report settings, and these options on the right, and the client cabinet because we need to input things like investment commentary and we'll have to see an investment list. So the first step in order to put investment commentary into your client's portfolio is to click on this client cabinet link. You'll see a list of clients populated and you can click on the client name. If you haven't created a client, you'll use the function on the right hand side and select information there. So we'll click on ABC company. You'll see a list of data periods if it's an existing client. If it's a new one, you may only see one data period. But this is important because any investment commentary that you accumulate over the periods will be saved. You can archive these. For example, we look at April 30th. If we want to archive that, we click on archive now, hit OK, and it will lock that period. You can access it afterwards if you want. It's just to ensure that there aren't any uh, edits that aren't meant to be unless you're actively meaning to change any information in there. But this investment commentary, any watch list decisions, any watch list action items, those will all be saved in the toolkit. And what we want to do is go into the most recent data period and add some investment commentary. So we want to click on this edit link. It's important every time you want to make a change to a client, click on this edit link. And it will take us to the main section, the main portfolio section. Inside our holdings and models area, we'll have a list of investments. We kept it simple for this demo here, just five. But the main area we need to go under is the watch list slash notes section. And this is important because our notes are housed here. So if we want to add notes to an investment, there should be an add function on the right hand side that you can click on. Click on add, it'll take you into an investment notes prompt and a create note function is on the right hand side. So if you want to create your first note, hit create note, click on edit, and it will take you into a section where you can type in information so we can put a sample note in here we can apply it to all the clients that hold this investment or we can put it to just the clients that have this investment so if we want to have just ABC company with this note just select that one but if we want it for all clients make sure you keep it on global note you can display this note within different areas of the toolkit reports Investment commentary is one, watch us action items is another, and then you can also display these notes internally. So investment commentary is a specific section in a report template. Same with watch us action items, only funds that are on the watch list will appear in the section, and then don't display again is for internal usage. You can change the display date and then also save your information. So that's how to create your investment commentary notes. Any other types of notes will also be housed here and you'll see a history of those notes as you start accumulating them over time. So now that the investment commentary uh, for these individual investments is taken care of, what we wanna do is start uploading other pieces to help build out our report template. So we're gonna do individual sections first and then go back and bring this all together in one report template. So the next thing you might want to do is upload a logo to the toolkit. And this is done under settings, report settings, and logos. So you'll see we already have some logos uploaded here. You will get a sample when you upload your image. The function on the right hand side, upload, you want to click that. 
there will be a browse function you can select and you'll be able to find your logo within here. So make sure that your logo has a name so we can do version 1. You'll see it is selected here. It needs to be in a JPG, JPEG, PNG, or BMP file format. And the recommended image size is 250 by 250 pixels. If your logo, when you upload it, doesn't look right, for example, it's huge on the report, try resizing it and uploading it again, maybe saving it into a different file format. So. If we look at our logo that we just uploaded, you'll see it's in the top left corner of our report template. Again, if your logo is pretty big, that might be okay, but if it's huge like this one on the report, try resizing it and uploading it again. It shouldn't show up this big unless you want it to look like that, but you probably don't. Again, you'll see here MDC Advisor sample logo upload multiple logos, any ones that you want, and you can set these as default so if you want to use one logo for all of your reports on the default fi360 report templates you can make sure that one sole logo is used if in your custom report template you want to use another logo then you'll be able to set different logos for different report templates but that's really going to be the main function of the logo section and again if you want to set one as default do it here if you want to upload a logo, select the right hand side. And if you want to edit the logo, click on this edit link as well as the name. So now that you have a logo uploaded, the next section we can go to is our disclosures area. So we can go in the top navigation bar under the report settings area by clicking on that. Or if we want to navigate using the top nav bar here, click on disclosures and it'll take us into that area. So you'll see we have some example disclosures already uploaded. If you want to create a new one, right hand side, click on create, put in a disclosure name, create that disclosure, and then it will be populated within the table and pop open for you to input information. So you can have a cover page disclosure and a last page disclosure. In addition to that, once you've input your information, you can also set this as default. So all the main FI360 report templates that we provide to you, you can apply that to all of them. Uh, if you want to apply just this one to a specific report template, you can also do that. So once you're done creating your disclosure, make sure you click save. And if you need to go back and edit this disclosure, just use the edit link on the right hand side here. So again, you can have multiple disclosures and you can upload these and apply them to all of your default report templates. Again, not custom reports or individual custom report templates on an as is basis and as needed. So next, how do we bring this all together? So if we want to, you know, we uploaded the logo. If we want to bring in a color scheme, we can do that as well. Um, again, top nav bar, report settings, color schemes. If we hop in here, we have multiple color schemes. Again, same functions. Click on the create on the right hand side type in your name you can set it as a default color scheme and if we edit our example one color scheme you'll see that we can change fonts we can put in font colors so if we click click, click on font color and we want like a red color select that the main header color you'll see is an example here if we want to change that and we want to select it it changes depending on where we select in this RBG palette if we have specific hexadecimal codes that we can type in with the RGB values, you can do that as well for header color, font color, secondary header and font color, and tertiary header and font color. All right, so we did disclosures, logos, color schemes. If we want to create a custom report template that includes some of these, then the next step is to either go to the report templates area here or go under the settings area, report settings, and report templates. So on the right hand side, there's a create new report template function. Again, recurring theme here, create function is normally on the right. So if we click on create, we can type in 
a template name. This is for internal use, the top one. If you want to have this show up on our report as well, put that in the report title area. There's an important distinction here with the template type. Client report will only show up in my client, so you have to access a client in order to get to this report. General investment report will be everywhere, so the client cabinet as well as the analyzer and a bunch of other areas within the toolkit. And these do have different sections available to them. My clients has all sections available because some of them are client specific or general and the general investment report will have a smaller amount of report sections um, but those will be available everywhere so make sure if you wanted to show up in the analyzer to click on this general investment report section we can change the layout for example we can pick landscape we can put in those color schemes so if we want example one we want our version one logo we want to put in a, disc a disclosure and then we can also include client name FIN required settings and include page numbers. So once we've filled out all this information, you can hit the create template function. And then you're prompted to add available report sections. So on the left hand side here, we have a bunch of sections you can select. If we want a cover page to start things off, click on your cover page. You can look at the section preview, add the section, and it'll show up on the right hand side. You can add a whole bunch of different sections here, as many as you want pretty much. You could add them all. It would be a really extensive report if you want to do that, but maybe you want the cover page, the due diligence criteria breakdown, which shows monitoring information. And if we do add that section over, there will be some other specific section options you can use. So by clicking on this plus or minus sign, it will open up a section where you can have some different options. So you can hide investment summary or historical detail, but we'll just leave it as is right now. We can also put holding summaries in. So if we wanna have this holding summary ahead of the due diligence criteria breakdown, just highlight, hit the move up function, and it will hop in front of it. If we add investment commentary, which if we want that commentary we put in earlier to show up, make sure you add this section over, because then you'll see all that information that you put in. So if we add all these sections, we want to make sure that we save this template. And then if we want to run this report, we will then go back into the client cabinet and run the report. So we can go to my clients, client cabinet. We'll go to ABC company. Click on the edit link again. Always important to do that. We have a reports button up here we can go to or we can select produce client reports either one is fine we'll click the reports option up here and then we'll see annual temp client report one was included in the customer report template area so the top section in the reports area is our customer report templates the bottom section here is FI360 default report templates. You cannot edit the FI360 report templates that are at the bottom. You can edit your report templates at the top. So if you wanna edit that report template we just created, you can click on the edit link in the client and you'll be able to add sections, remove them, apply a different logo, disclosure, color scheme, and make all the edits that you want. If we wanna generate the report, just click on the produce report section and then it will go up into the report queue and you can open it up. Now you can have multiple customer report templates. Maybe you have one for a specific client type, maybe individual investors, and then you have another for foundations or endowments and then another for 401ks. If you wanna go that route, you're more than welcome to do that. If you would instead want to make a short report, a medium size report, and then a long report and use them in all contexts, maybe you do that. It's up to you how you want to utilize this custom report template section. Again, you can create as many as you want using this function on the right hand side of the client or within the settings, report settings, and report templates area. So we clicked on that red PDF button, report queue, is now done processing so if we want to open up this report all we have to do is click on the pdf and we'll be all set with that so you'll see we have our logo uploaded color scheme we have our cover one disclosure 
Uh, and that'll be all for customizing reports and um, having your investment review with your client. So make sure you add any uh, report sections you want before. If you add report sections to your report template after the report is generated, it won't automatically show up. You'll have to regenerate that report by clicking on the PDF again once those changes are made. So just a quick recap again of what we did. Went into the client cabinet and accessed our investments. We added notes. Those will show up within the investment commentary section. You need to put that in the customer report template if you want that to show up. Next, went into the settings area, report settings, looked at our disclosures, logos, color schemes, built a report template with all of those, and then went into our client and generated that report that you saw with all of those customizations and the sections that we wanted. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email us at tools at fi360.com. We'd be more than happy to help with that. And thanks for tuning into the webinar and look forward to seeing you all on a live webinar and uh, check out our other videos in the Help Center area. Once you click on Help Center, it'll prompt you to either register for a live webinar or you can check out the archived webinar webinars on the right hand side. There's also some FI360 fiduciary score brochures on the homepage located here, our two-page brochure and our detailed methodology document, as well as some other information that might be beneficial to you. So again, thanks for tuning in and look forward to hearing it from you. Email us at tools at fi360.com and we'd be happy to help you out.